Third Baptist Church was founded in San Francisco, California, August 1852. Devout Christians gathered in the home of William and Eliza Davis to establish what was then known as the First Colored Baptist Church of San Francisco. This community was born taking the lead as it was and is now the oldest religious institution of African American origin in the Western United States. This unbroken fellowship has been sustained throughout its 160 year history by its commitment to worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Its Christian example of faithful service, benevolence and community and its support and provision of remarkable leadership that has garnered recognition in the city of San Francisco, the country, and even in missions throughout the world. As the torch lit by those who have run well and long before us is now being passed, new generations of believers emerge to build upon this rich legacy in the 21st century. At its best, Third Baptist has been and must remain the light on the hill. Well, hello there. I didn't even see you come in. I was just over there with Reverend Johnson and Reverend Wolfeser as we all were flipping through some pages, marveling in utter fascination and admiration at the stories that comprise the rich history and legacy of this house of hope and worship. For instance, did you know that Coretta Scott King, W.B. Du Bois, Paul Robeson, Josephine Baker, Drs. Benjamin Elijah Mays, Mr. Andrew Young, and many other African-American icons have stood in this very place behind this very pulpit. I stand in reverence, humility, and honestly, total amazement when I think about the sermons that these walls have heard, the lives that sat in the pews and heard them, and the souls that in hearing them turned their lives to Christ at this very altar. I am the Reverend Bernard D. Allen, Jr., and I have the inestimable privilege of serving as the administrative assistant to Dr. Amos C. Brown, the pastor of this prestigious congregation. I want you now to travel with me for the next few minutes as we celebrate and revisit the illustrious 160-year history and legacy of Third Baptist Church of San Francisco. Come. Don't be in a hurry. Travel with me. The story of Third Baptist Church first begins through the mid-19th century when many slaves came to the city of San Francisco with their owners and then sought and found freedom in the free state of California. As history records, with the fruits of their labor, they were able to purchase their freedom as many of them labored in the gold fields and also the freedom of individual members of their families left behind in the South at $1,000 a head, an exorbitant price for that time. Many free men and women came in search of gold and opportunities as well as land for the family home. These early African-American settlers developed churches, businesses, schools, newspapers, and social and cultural organizations. The black churches in San Francisco became institutions of survival, and provided creative means of calling forth pride in achievement to disprove the assumption of Negro inferiority. As the oldest predominantly African-American Baptist church in the Western United States, founded in 1852 during the Gold Rush days. And the thing that excited me about Third Baptist was that 
unlike many churches in America of African Americans. Third Baptist historically had always embraced a holistic understanding of spirituality and ministry. In 1852, black Baptists attended the First Baptist Church of San Francisco where they were required to sit in the balcony. The blacks decided they wanted true freedom and staged a spiritual revolution by leaving First Baptist. Led by Eliza Davis, the small band formed their church in the home of William and Eliza Davis, the then first colored Baptist church was born. In 1855, the name of the church was changed for two reasons. The first being the conviction of its members that its racial designation was deemed out of harmony with the spirit of Jesus Christ. And the second, that no other church in the city of San Francisco included a racial designation in its name. This was a definite expression of the socially forward thinking for which the church would become known. Third Baptist Church, San Francisco, June 7, 1856. We feel grateful to God for his continued mercies to us the past year. Have been unable to pursue our pastor, but have extended a call to the Reverend Charles Satchel of Cincinnati, which has been accepted and he will leave for this city in July next. The first black pastor, Charles Satchel, came here in 1856 from Cincinnati, Ohio, as a leader in the abolitionist movement. In fact, the church that he pastored, the Union Baptist Church, had the stipulation in its uh, bylaws that no one could be pastor unless they were a leader in the abolitionist movement. That whole city was a hotbed for birthing abolitionists. Lyman Beecher, the father of Harry Beecher Stowe, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, was president of the Lane College there. And Lane College was place where many people found refuge across the Ohio River from Kentucky to freedom. And the Underground Railroad was very much a part of Lane Seminary's history and Cincinnati. I cite this bit, bit of history to say, Third Baptist never got away from its DNA throughout these 160 years. The church has been on the cutting edge and pastors have wedded together personal piety and responsible civic engagement. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll be at the table when company comes. No one will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. The Reverend J.H. Kelly was called to serve as the pastor of Third Baptist Church from 1898 until 1911. At 5.12 a.m. on April 18, 1906, the infamous San Francisco earthquake and fire struck, destroying much of the city, including Third Baptist Church. Reverend Kelly led the church through dreaded losses, membership dispersion, and the reconstruction of a new edifice on Hyde and Clay Streets. Much of the information about Third Baptist between the 1870s and the turn of the century is either missing or incomplete because the records kept at the church prior to 1906 were destroyed. By 1921, another true testament to the church's rich history was created. Church records state that the women of Third Baptist Church co-founded the Madam C.J. Walker Home for Women and Girls. Named after the famed hair care entrepreneur and first self-made African-American woman millionaire and philanthropist, the Madam C.J. Walker Home provided single African-American females 
with housing and employment counseling. Just a few years later, in 1929, the Great Depression devastated the United States. Hard times came to people throughout the country, especially for rural blacks. Cotton prices plunged from 18 to 6 cents a pound. Two-thirds of some two million black farmers earned nothing or went into debt. Hundreds of thousands of sharecroppers left the land for cities, leaving behind abandoned fields and homes. Shall we call him this morning? Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. It was during these tumultuous times in 1932 that Reverend Frederick Douglass Haynes, Sr., a devout man of courage and vision, was called to pastor Third Baptist Church. He was dedicated to a faithful congregation worshiping in the edifice of Hyde and Clay. I am Wesley Wardell Bright, and I've been in this city for 69 years. I came in 1943. I've been a Third Baptist, a member of Third Baptist for 69 years, ever since I've been here. But Reverend Haynes Sr. was a pastor when I joined on Hyde and Clay. The war was just beginning good, and soldiers was everywhere, and everything was booming. Great. The African-American community was great. His wife uh, was a well-known singer with the uh, Roberta Martin Singers, and it was just the center of uh, black activity here at the Baptist. When blacks were leaving the South, migrating westward during the war period. This church, under the leadership of Dr. Haynes, was a bastion of hope, of help, of healing. Uh, I'm Douglas Haynes, the son of Reverend Frederick Douglas Haynes, Sr., who was pastor of Third Baptist from 1932 to 1971. The building that uh, Next door is, was the family parsonage where my family used to live over there before my time. I've heard many fond memories and stories of people uh, running up and down on the cable car to get to church on Sunday morning. My name is Clarence C. Santi II, <clears throat> member of Third Baptist Church from November 8th, 19. 37. I came with my family. I'm happy to be here. These ladies are some of the pioneers that were here at that time. One of the pioneers with the big hat on is Mrs. Smith. I came to Third Baptist October the 15th, 1943. And I came and I joined the first Sunday I was here. And I was referred to this church by a friend that worked with me at the Marine Shipyard in South Salida. But I came and met friends, especially the old ladies, and I tried myself to dress like the old ladies was dressed when I joined that Sunday in October, 1943. I too, just thankful, Lord, for these 60s, 1943, when I entered this building to join church with Third Baptist. So many of my old friends said, you've taken them on, Lord, but you left us here. Mm -hmm. This darling sister, this one, all of them, dear God, that I know right now, I'm just thankful Thank that we are here together today. It's a few of us still here. Just take care of us, Lord. We thank you for all these young people. We thank you for these middle-aged ones. We thank you for the old-aged ones. This girl says 93 and 95. So probably the oldest one here today. But we're just grateful to be here. In the name of that son, Jesus, we say amen. 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 amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We believe as baptized believers of the New Testament church and the leadership and power of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that through the sinless life of Jesus and his death upon the cross, God made him the final judge of all. Therefore, we are committed to bearing the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We shall, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, work for the spiritual, religious, moral, academic, and social advancement of all people. To promote excellence in worship, Bible study, church polity, and world missions. To contribute one-tenth of our earnings for the support of the church and its services to the church family and the world. We also unite to support and enrich our families, to train our children in religious and secular education, to be positive, just, and show the spirit of Christ in our conduct. We covenant together with dedicated hearts, willing minds, warm spirits, and able bodies to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I came to San Francisco in 1949, and I reunited, I united with Third Baptist in 1966. I think at that time I was about 35 years old, and my aunt belonged to Third Baptist, and uh, she was so excited about us moving from Los Angeles back here, and I started being active in different ministries of the church, and ever since then I've been busy. And I came to San Francisco in 1956. I turned 16 years old two weeks after coming to San Francisco. And uh, it was very exciting to me coming from a, uh, a, small, a small southern town. And there were so many things to do in San Francisco at that time. There was a huge... African-American population in the city. Uh, there were so many activities for uh, African-American youth. I say to young people quite often that God does not go out of style. You know, so many young people think that it's uncool to, to have a relationship with the Lord or to be a part of uh, of a church and I tell them quite often uh, no, at no matter what age or whatever stage we are in our life we all need God some of us haven't realized it yet but we need him and we will always need him Third Baptist Church of San Francisco is a marker in my spiritual journey. Uh, it's the first assigned church that I had coming out of seminary as a young minister, transitioning from a seminary into a practitioner. And being here to learn and to study under Reverend Brown has been um, a blessing and a privilege. Um, so many people, uh, great scholars and preachers and singers have come to this place to share their gifts and for me to witness that um, in this time in my life is something that I will never forget. W.E. Du Bois celebrated his 90th birthday here. 
February the 14, 1958. And this was the venue for his birthday and for his speaking to a capacity audience in the sanctuary because Carlton B. Goodland, the first black to run for governor of California, appealed to Dr. Haynes to make Third Baptist a free and open forum for black people to organize, to strategize, and to celebrate their history and heritage. Third Baptist, as, as a beacon, you know, uh, in essentially its mere physical structure, was always present in my life, you know. I mean, if there was something major that was happening in the city around the movement, the civil rights movement, the visits of certain dignitaries or certain people who were leaders in the movement, if there were, they were meeting at, at a, um, a, a, a faith-based um, institution or building, it was going to be Third Baptist. This church uh, was not only uh, a Christian institution, but it was a community institution. And as the song is being sung, the doors of this church stand ajar to receive for discipleship. Following in the footsteps of his father, Reverend Haynes Jr. was called to succeed his father as pastor of Third Baptist Church in 1972. Reverend Haynes led the first ministry behind prison bars of an African-American church, predating the great concern that has been expressed by Michelle Alexander in what she called mass incarceration of African Americans. And then finally, during the administration of Reverend Frederick Douglass Haynes, Jr., the F.D. Haynes housing development was finalized. Moderate to low-income housing for people in our community who had been displaced by the redevelopment agency. Very active in church affairs and herself a speaker in demand in both local and national denominational work, Mrs. Lynetta Haynes was a distinguished compliment to her husband's ministry. Despite his untimely death, Reverend Haynes' short but memorable tenure was marked by his intense interest in the evangelical mission of the church as reflected in the motto, a learning church, a stewardship church, an evangelical church. All that I am ever hope to be, I would all to God and Third Baptist. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the best way I can put it. Third Baptist served as my launching pad mm -hmm. uh, in so many ways. Uh, number one, uh, this was of course the place of ministry for both my grandfather and father. Honestly, I, did ha I had no consciousness of what it was they were doing and the impact they were making because the good news is that they never allowed pastoring to get in the way of being good uh, family men. And so my father, I mean, he was just my daddy. And, you know, I knew he came here and worked and preached, and I admired him and loved him for that. Uh, and I wanted to be like him, but he was just daddy as far as I was concerned. My father died, I was 14. Uh, my granddaddy died, I was 10. And so, I, again, all I knew is that they were wonderful father, grandfather. I came into a church consciousness, ironically, when Dr. Brown became the pastor. And all of a sudden, I, you know, I'm growing and hopefully maturing, and I'm starting to see and sense, you know, what the role of the church is uh, in the lives of individuals and beyond in the lives of community. It is the irony of history that during the mid-1950s, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People looked forward to hosting its convention here in San Francisco, California. Little did the city know, and little did members of the organization know, that among all of the dignitaries that would grace its stage, there would be in the number a young man, 15 years old, named Amos Brown. My first visit to San Francisco was at the tender age of 15 years old when 
The field secretary of NAACP, Medgar Wiley Evers, brought me here to attend the national convention of the NAACP. It was in July of 1956. And I came here as president of the Mississippi State Youth Conference and president of the West Jackson Youth Council. At that convention, I first met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he spoke for Youth Night. And as an aside from that great gathering, I came here to worship at Third Baptist. Little did I know that I would be coming back here in 1976 to assume the pastoral leadership. I never shall forget it. I was 45 years old when Pastor Brown came. I met him, and he has been an inspiration uh, for me to continually uh, do better in my study and my religious life. Now, he walked in like a scholar when he would carry his books and his manuscript into the pulpit. And I literally, when I was at Lincoln High School, I would walk around erudite, erect, just like Dr. Brown, because I wanted to be like him. I'm very happy that I grew up under the leadership of Dr. Haynes and through Dr. Brown, and both were visionaries and provided this community with some of the best opportunities that any child or adult could ever wish for. I have had some wonderful experiences here. I love the pastor of this church. I often refer to him as a theologian, a historian, and a politician. Everybody's trying to find themselves. And life can be difficult in many ways. And I just don't think you can get enough of encouragers in the world. Well, I think Third Baptist has always been a leader in the community. And so I expect that it will continue. If there is something in the community that needs to be done, usually Third Baptist takes the lead. I guess it was in June of 1981, it was, that the uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention came out with an announcement that there was a rare form of pneumonia being presented and our pastor has always been on the cutting edge of social issues and, and Pastor Brown informed himself of the etiology of the disease. There were many times that we had AIDS and HIV testing here at Third Baptist Church. There's a scripture that says faith without works is dead. Well, we have, our works have shown what our faith is. Being a deacon is an awesome responsibility. To meet with a person who is going through an illness or whatever, an accident, and to see them light up when you walk into the room. Many times there are those who are not even able to communicate with you. They may be in whatever condition that would render them unable to communicate. And you pray with them. You pray for them. And in holding their hand while praying, the message comes through. Most people at Third Baptist, including myself, are not just content, but we're engaged in um, social and civic engagement. Um, we're out feeding the hungry, uh, in the hospitals, and are doing the best with life and the time that we have been given. Growing up in this church has given me a lot of opportunities, opportunities of leadership, uh, definitely sharpened my skills as I am now uh, in the professional world. Here I participate in the children's choir and um, the dance ministry with Miss Allen. And it's just so much fun going here and it's just like a huge family and I just love being here. The church has been a marvelous help, beacon of help for the community. So many people have come in need and they have met that need, whether, we're, whether they were from Eritrea, uh, Ethiopia, or any other place. During my work, when they would come down, they would say, Third Baptist helped me. As one of eight students in the only course taught by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., during his short tenure as an adjunct professor at Morehouse College, 
Dr. Amos C. Brown was convinced that among other things, it would be important that Dr. King, one of his beloved mentors, would be remembered as a scholar. Among Third Baptist's 30 plus ministries of outreach are its educational programs, which include San Francisco Students Back on Track, an after school tutorial program. This program has been wonderfully enhanced with the advent of the Student of Promise Closing the Achievement Gap Initiative, targeting males from African American, Latino, and Pacific Islander communities. Formed over 25 years ago by Dr. Amos Brown and Third Baptist Church and Congregation Emmanuel, both institutions have crossed religious boundaries to address the issue and the challenges that face kids from underserved communities. We've always embraced a holistic expression down specifically to our worship. In the beginning of the 1960s, under the directorship of the world-class and knighted concert pianist Sir Jules Hayward, the blending of human voices in sweet harmony, lifting anthems, spirituals, and hymns, created the glorious sound by which Third's music ministry was and continues to be set apart. music ministry has included all genres of music, all idioms, so that culturally and in terms of the arts, everybody can get their spiritual, cultural, and social needs met. Reverend Brown's messages are so powerful and so riveting in that when people come, they want to come back and they want to join this church and they want to join Jesus and it's wonderful. So from an evangelistic standpoint of view, when you come here and you feel the Holy Spirit, you want to stay and then you're encouraged to work and to tell someone else about Third Baptist. Hi, I'm London Breed and I'm the executive director of the African American Art and Culture Complex located down the street from Third Baptist Church. And Third Baptist for me is a partner. It's about bringing community together. It's about teaching us about our history, making sure that we never forget how important it is for us to maintain our spiritual center, but at the same time using our history and understanding what our community is really about and taking the opportunity to be engaged politically in order to make things better for our community. The West Bay Conference Center represents another instance that throughout the history of Third Baptist, each administration has been vitally involved in seeking the peace of the city. We must keep in mind also that our ministry has reached across the waters to Africa. We resettled over 3,000. Third Baptist to me is like my home, They're like my family, the members of course especially. The, without Third Baptist uh, members, I cannot be now here. They helped me, of course, with my life, including my, my, my family. I came here with my wife first, of course. Uh, at the end of the day, Third Baptist, they sponsor all my families. Most of them here in San Francisco, including my mother. Another credit to renowned legacy of Third Baptist Church of San Francisco was given during Reverend Jesse Jackson's campaign for the presidency of the United States in 1984 when he made Third Baptist one of his first stops. In 2002, Third Baptist experienced one of its finest moments as a servant church for all peoples when it was recognized as such by former President William Jefferson Clinton during the celebration of his 150th anniversary. Third Baptist has always been a front runner in community issues and today the issue that we're dealing with is obesity. We're trying to stamp it out because we know that obesity causes many chronic illnesses and we're stressing helpful living habits, exercises. We walk for a mile and a half to the church and now here in this church uh, fellowship hall we are experiencing all of these venues that have come together from the community to make this event. What does the Lord require of you? people of God, but to do justly, 
to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, and may many, many more for generations to come experience God in Christ, meeting them where they are through the work in the community, state, nation, and throughout the world in this present age. God bless you. Happy 160th, Third Baptist. We keep going year after year, getting better and better. Tell him I'm, I'm your husband. Huh? Tell him I'm your husband. <laughs> Tell you, tell you about, this is my sweet husband, oh, and we Lord. have been together for 57 years and looking forward to the next 57, what, 60. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Again, I can give you a kiss. You can give me a kiss, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Third Baptist, on lasting and being a vibrant beacon to the community for 160 years. Happy anniversary to Third Baptist on your 160th anniversary. What I do here at Third Baptist is that I'm involved in a convalescent ministry. I'm also involved in the jail ministry. And we do so many things here at Third Baptist Church to ensure that people, when they come here, that they feel a certain comfort and warmth from the Spirit of God. I'm delighted to be part of Third Baptist. I'm excited and can't believe that I'm actually a Reverend Michael Jordan at this point in my life, and I look forward to a continued relationship uh, that it will flourish. I want to wish them a happy 160th anniversary and look forward to my another 160 or so years, at least. Hi, I'm Joshua Boone. Hi, I'm Julius Allen. And I'm Janae Giraffe. We are the future of Third Baptist Church. Happy, Happy 160th, 160th anniversary. anniversary. This is only just the beginning. Uh, we're looking for another 160. Uh, happy anniversary, Third Baptist. And I hope that in my work in the church as a deacon, parking attendant, security, that I give back in some small way of what's been given to me here at Third Baptist. So happy anniversary. I hope we go another 160 years. And Reverend Brown, I love you to death. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. Uh, my grandparents uh, were here before the building when it was at the old building and then they moved here. They lived right across the street and then my father grew up here and then when I came along I grew up but baptized right here. Uh, my grandparents were very active in the senior program so I was, all, I was in church at least five days a week so uh, this is my home away from home. My name is Amy Vanessa Rogers and Third Baptist has been a huge part of my life. Um, I first started attending Third at 10 years old, and Third Baptist is where I really learned how to read music. Um, we did wonderful concerts doing the Handel's Messiah every year during the holidays. And for me, that has been by far the most amazing experience. <laughs> Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Third Baptist. We love you. <laughs> Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. Third Baptist. Happy, Happy anniversary, Third Baptist Church. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Third Baptist. Baptist. Happy anniversary, Third Baptist. Happy, Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. Third Baptist Church. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. Woo! Happy 160th, uh, Third Baptist. And happy 160th year of Third Baptist Church. Happy anniversary. 100 anniversary for 160 of Third Baptist Church. Happy, Happy 160 anniversary. anniversary. Third at Third Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Woo! <laughs> That's it. We love it. We love it. Hopefully, the 160 year anniversary pleases everyone because it really pleased me. And I see the light of being a member. Happy. 160th anniversary. God willing, it'll be 160 more. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. I know I'm a living witness because I've been here almost 70 years. Happy anniversary to Third Baptist. Happy 160th anniversary. I wish Third Baptist. Uh, 
very happy 160th anniversary. 160 years anniversary to Third Baptist Church. Amen. <laughs> say 160 if I went to the school that was the oldest public school in the state of California and now we have the oldest Baptist church west of the Rockies and it's been a pleasure to grow up here. Maybe we have 160 more years of uh, history at Third Baptist. And I do wish Third Baptist a happy 160th anniversary and I'm sure we'll have another 160 coming. Happy anniversary, anniversary. Third Baptist. Uh -huh. Give me the family. Okay. All right, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> May God bless Third Baptist, and I know that he will, to be around for 160 more years. Amen. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. I just stopped by today to Third Baptist, and Reverend Samus Brown, and say, Happy 160th anniversary! Happy anniversary, Third Baptist Church. I would like to say congratulations and happy anniversary. 160 years to the Third Baptist Church. Uh, may God keep blessing you because you keep blessing all of us. Thank you. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist. I want to wish Third Baptist and all the community that has nurtured in the past and continues to nurture the best for the next 160 years. Happy 160th anniversary, Third Baptist, and may God continue to richly bless you and keep you for years and years to come. On behalf of the illustrious women of Third Baptist Church, Happy 160th church anniversary. I am Morris Chestnut and I'd like to congratulate Dr. Amos C. Brown and uh, the Third Baptist Church on the 160th anniversary. We've been here for one year and I must say the music ministry has been just phenomenal. Once again, happy anniversary, 160th for our Third Baptist Church. And ditto to everything he said and we are so blessed to be here and we are having a wonderful time. The Third Baptist Ministry of Music is fantastic, very blessed, and very anointed. Hit him, look at Together, Third Baptist, we can celebrate 160 years. Get excited. Let's make it happen. Happy anniversary, Third Baptist Church! <laughs> Same man's <man's> lights. <laughs>